Even 93 million miles away, we can feel the sun's enormous destructive power. But not all of us are naturally protected against the sun's lethal rays. Fair-skinned people have weak defenses. The result is sunburn from the sun's deadly ultraviolet radiation. This anti-burn patrol is on the lookout for unprotected bathers. The greater the exposure to the sun, the greater the risk of getting skin cancer, especially deadly malignant melanomas. Greater dangers are whipped up when the sun's surface is twisted and contorted by powerful magnetic fields. These fields can puncture the surface and create dark areas called sunspots. Each one is big enough to swallow the entire Earth, and their presence is a warning. The magnetic disturbances cause enormous eruptions blasting huge amounts of radiation and billions of tons of charged particles into space. Every 11 years, the sunspots increase in number and size. A mass of intense energy can head our way, engulfing the entire Earth. When this happens, it's not just the sunbathers who need to head for cover. March 1989, the sun was about to give Eastern Canada an early wake-up call. It was the height of the sun's 11-year cycle, the solar maximum. Out in space, a cloud of incandescent matter over one million miles long was heading straight for Earth. Night workers at the National Grid Control Center had no idea what was in store. At a quarter to three in the morning, engineers noticed an enormous surge in their power system. When the cloud hit the earth, it induced a massive surge of electricity inside the power cables. Engineers struggled to reduce the load, but in a matter of minutes, they'd lost control of the whole system. Power plants over half a million square miles of Quebec were swamped with excess current. Moments later, the whole grid blew. The city was plummeted into darkness. Power was lost to eight million homes. Further north, the same cloud that had plunged Quebec into darkness was lighting up the night sky in a massive celestial fireworks display. This is the Aurora Borealis. Some of the particles from the cloud had become trapped inside the Earth's magnetic field. As they passed through the atmosphere, they reacted with the air. Like a giant neon light, the solar radiation lit up the night sky. Our sun is not the only star that threatens our existence. Space is filled with harmful particles and radiation. Traveling above the Earth's protective atmosphere is extremely dangerous. Despite the dangers of traveling above the atmosphere, our desire to conquer space is so great that we are prepared to risk the consequences.
In 1969, Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong and Mike Collins began their historic quarter of a million mile journey to the moon. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. Celebrations ran high as Aldrin and Armstrong stepped onto the lunar surface for the first time. But behind the euphoria, the pair were keeping a secret from Mission Control in Houston. They'd seen more than just the dust of the moon's surface. It was only when they returned to Earth that Armstrong and Aldrin revealed their secret. They reported seeing strange white streaks of light flashing in their eyes. NASA decided to run tests on future missions to discover exactly what the light flashes might be. Astronaut Charlie Duke was their guinea pig. On board Apollo 16, he was asked to watch out for the mysterious flashes. We're on our way to the moon, and uh, all of a sudden I closed my eyes and I saw one. It was like a the first one was like a flash bulb exploding inside your eye. Uh, it was very bright, very white, uh, and uh, I said, hey, I saw my first one. It was just this streak of light, very fast, and, and just as white as it could be, uh, and, uh, and very bright. A young researcher, Larry Pinsky, was assigned to work with Duke and find out what was causing the flashes. White streak in the right eye, upper center. Mark, light streak. He recorded Duke's comments back in Houston and eventually realized the flashes could only be one thing. Uh, bottom to up, top. Mark, faint uh, left, faint white dot in the uh, left eye, extreme left. Well, it turns out that they were seeing cosmic rays. They were seeing uh, these elementary particles that uh, permeate space, uh, that penetrate the spacecraft and actually penetrate the body, and in this case, penetrate the eye. We're feeling good. Tell me how about an extension, you guys? What Pinsky had worked out was the Duke and the other astronauts were seeing high-energy particles produced from one of the universe's most violent acts of destruction. When a massive star trillions of miles away explodes as a supernova. As a heavyweight star nears the end of its life, it incinerates all the fuel in its core. The heavier a star is, the more catastrophic its death. The core becomes unstable. It loses energy and starts a headlong collapse that for one second gives off as much energy as all the stars in all the 